Hi, Kurt Jackson here with this week's installment of Your Money Matters. <clears throat> you know, one of the most important things, I think, in retirement is uh, is income, you know, how much money we actually have to spend. I mean, I think that's the ultimate goal for everybody, no matter what your, um, your sense of uh, your ideal retirement is. So I, I found this article on US, from uh, USA Today, and it's called How to Create Tax-Efficient Income in Retirement. It's by Robert Powell, who writes a lot with uh, um, CBS Market Watch, and, and it does a pretty good job, although he's solely, squarely in the traditional camp. And if you follow any of my, my writings or my videos or anything that I do, you'll know that I'm uh, very pretty much 180 degrees uh, diametrically opposed to traditional uh, retirement planning. And here's some of the, the main reasons why really are, are we're going to talk about today. So I want to share a little bit about what, what he said in the article. I'm not going to read the whole thing to him. I just picked out some ex excerpts that I think are important and tell, a, um, tell a, the story that I want to help tell. It says, it's not what you earn, but what the old adage goes, what you keep. Uh, and that's especially important phrase to live by in retirement. During your golden years, when income might be scarce, you ought to draw money from your various investment accounts in the most tax efficient manner possible. Otherwise, you risk spending less on your lifestyle and more on taxes uh, with for Uncle Sam. All makes perfect sense, right? And my question is, is <clears throat> this. When you think about your retirement, do you want you when you get there? Do you want your retirement to be known for having a great big number on a on a investment statement, or to have the most spendable income, the most income coming in, not just gross income, but the most money to spend, the most cash flow? Which would you rather have in retirement? Which would you rather want your retirement to be known for? Right, so then he goes on and says, uh, so what's the best way about creating tax efficient income in retirement? Experts say there are several rules of thumb, but before you blindly follow this or that rule, you ought to become familiar with how different types of uh, accounts, uh, of assets and accounts are taxed. Okay, and here's how they present this to us. The first group is interest income, non-qualified dividend, short-term capital gains, rents, royalty income, income from qualified retirement plans, your defined pension, pension plan, 401k, 403b, 457 plan, income from non-qualified deferred annuities, income from IRAs will be taxed as ordinary income at rates ranging from 10% to 39.6% in 2015. Earned income from wages and or self-employment, and in some cases, Social Security will also be taxed as ordinary income. The second group is qualified dividends and long-term capital gains, which will be taxed as long-term capital gain at, at long-term capital gains rates, which are currently zero to twenty percent. The third is tax exempt, tax exempt interest income, life insurance income from certain re qualified retirement plans like the Roth IRA and the Roth 401k are generally not taxed at all. All right, so after hearing those three, and I apologize for all the terms and stuff, you know, for the most part, almost everybody. Except for maybe the top five percent, maybe top, maybe top ten percent, most of us have money in our four hundred one k's. We don't have all those other things. We might have a little bit there, but not, not you know, not like the the ultra wealthy do. So really, what we should be concentrating on for mo a majority of Americans is their retirement plan that they have through work or an IRA or a pension or something along those lines. Okay, but. So after hearing those three, okay, the first two are ta one's taxed at a higher rate, two's taxed at a lower rate, three's not taxed at all. What do you think they should be focusing on? Number three, maybe I'd be focusing if I'm trying to create the most tax efficient income, I would look at tax free, okay? But that's not what they focus on. They spend the whole rest of the article really talking about the first two, and that's where I believe I fully believe in all my research and all the everything I've found has proven out and out tr to be true that, that this type of traditional thinking is killing everybody except maybe the top 1%. <clears throat> you think maybe the, the next 4% in the top 5 has enough money to do all the things that they want to do in retirement or well, remember if they have that much money most of them are living a much higher lifestyle they're at, they're at this at similar risks that the rest of us are because they're following they continue to follow traditional finan uh, traditional financial thinking planning retirement planning and and so they're also at risk all right, so I guess here's how I looked at it. If, if we're going to be smart about this, shouldn't we um, take a look and say, okay, if I'm going to put my money in, a, in an account that's going to build future taxes or that I have to pay taxes along the way, shouldn't I kind of fast forward and see what that's going to look, actually look like in retirement to see if it's going to help, if, you know, if it's going to build enough money 
that even after taxes, it's going to create more money for me to spend. Because that's our ultimate goal, right? Is I, I hope everybody can agree with that. If I can't imagine what your goal for retirement is, if it's not that, to have enough money to, to live and do all the things that you want to do, whatever those things may be. <clears throat> so... Let me, let me give you a quick example. You know, we, we're, we are taught to defer taxes, okay? We're taught to, you know, they, they tell us, put your money in your 401k, you get a big tax deduction. It's not a tax deduction. It looks like one today, but all you're doing is putting off those taxes to the future. So if I offered you a mortgage today, and I said, okay, yeah, don't worry about paying it back. You've got, in 30 years, you can pay it back, uh, and uh, we'll determine the interest rate then. How many of you would sign up for that mortgage? I can't imagine anybody would. You don't know what the interest rate's going to be in the future. You know what interest rates are today. Wouldn't you rather have the, the known interest rate today than the unknown tomorrow? Well, think about tax rates. What they're telling us to do is to let's not pay taxes at today's rate that we know to push it to the future and pay a tax rate there that we don't know. Now, who thinks tax rates are going to be lower in the future? I, I, I've met one financial advisor that tells his clients that because historically they've been going down. I think that's crazy, in my opinion. With all the debt that we have and everything, I mean, everything tells me, you know, with all the promises that the government's made that we don't have money to fund, I can't imagine a, a, a way that it, taxes are going to be lower in the future. Okay, so we've got kind of some misnomers out there that, that people think that that's what's going to happen. So let me give you kind of a quick example. There's a lot of numbers here, and I apologize for that. I'll try to emphasize the ones uh, that are most important. But let's assume that you started... Uh, through a 40-year work life, and you put $600 a month away, $7,200, and we did it in the in a 401k, okay? Because that's what most everybody's got is is that type of thing. So uh, if if I and and what they're telling me is I'm going to earn 8%, okay? Over time, you're going to earn 8% or better. I mean, Dave Ramsey says 12. That dude's crazy. Uh, so if I put $600 a month in for 40 years, earning 8%, I'd have 2.09 million. Okay? The model that they say is we can take 4% of that out and have a good chance of not outliving our money. Now, if I take 4% of that out, that's 83784 All right, so if I'm in a 25% tax bracket when I'm working, I'm just kind of going to play it like, like they tell us it's going to happen, then I'm actually $150 a month. Uh, Seventy-two thousand dollars over that forty-two year or that forty-year work life. I've I've deferred those taxes, so um, I have six hundred dollars working for me instead of four hundred and fifty if I if I was paying my taxes up front. Right. So, but now I got to pay. So so I was I saved seventy-two thousand dollars over over forty years. Supposedly saved. That's what they're telling you. You saved. You didn't. You didn't really. You just deferred it. So if I make them eighty-three seven eighty-four, let's just say tax rates are lower. Let's say it's twelve a twelve percent overall tax rate. I'd pay ten thousand and fifty-four dollars a year. All right. Now, believe it or not, that since you have all your income there and you have a good income, that in, ends up making your up to eighty-five percent of your Social Security taxable. So that means you could add another in a, in a twenty. Um, uh, in a 20% marginal tax rack, bracket, once again, I'm saying it's a lower tax rate because that's what they're promising you. There's another 30, almost 30, it's another 3188 in taxes that you're going to have to pay on your Social Security. So now my total tax bill is $13,242 a year. I live just 21 years in retirement. That's what the average retirement is lasting now, uh, according to several different studies. That means I would have paid two hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars in taxes. So I saved seventy-two. I paid two seventy-eight. Is that a good deal for you? I, I can't picture how any at any point in time that that's a good deal for you. But see, the problem is we don't earn eight percent. Okay, when you look at what actual people return earn, it's less than five. But even if I used a five percent return on that, then we're at nine fifteen, nine hundred fifteen thousand. Now that lowers my income down to thirty-six thousand six twenty-four. If I'm in a ten percent tax rate, there I'd pay thirty-six sixty-two in taxes. Um, if we assumed a nine percent, uh, actually, I'd be a, ten, a tenth. Uh, I'm just saying a nine. Well, I even made the numbers lower. Nine percent tax rate on my on my Social Security because I'm still going to be paying taxes on up to eighty-five percent, even with that low of an income. Um, I'm going to pay $5,575 a year in taxes. If I live 21 years, that's $117,000 in taxes. Still more than the 72 that I saved. Um, if I only earn 4%, that's 709. Now my income's 28,367. Well, here's the good news: I don't pay tax on up to 85% of my Social Security. I only pay tax on up to 50% of it. So now my tax bill's 39,62 a year. But I live 21 years. I still pay back 83,000. Right, so I if I earn less, 
Okay, and that's really what's actually happening. Okay, so maybe some of what they're saying is true that you do pay less in taxes, but only if you fail miserably and and you're planned it to save enough money to do all the things to live and do all the things that you want to do in retirement. So what if you could find a way to where we could take away the losses? We could. Um, I didn't. I didn't even get into fees, but we can earn a higher. Uh, return because of the way the thing's structured. We never have to worry about losses. We're grabbing gains up to a, a certain point, uh, up to a cap. So we give up the high gains, but we're still doing a great job. Uh, and I've got a much better chance to earn an actual 7% return, which is, which is really low historically for what it would be. Well, let's use it 7 But I'm only putting $450 a month in instead of 600 It creates $1.18 million. All right, so now since my fees are lower and my... Um, uh, I'm protected from losses. I can actually take out more money and not have to worry about running out of money. Right? So what if I can withdraw 7% instead of 4%? So now I've got 82681 but it's tax-free. I paid my taxes up front. Okay? And, it, and, and this is one of the three incomes that doesn't make Social Security income taxable. So now I get the full amount from my, from my Social Security. So now my total income is 107681 with adding a $25,000 uh, Social Security income in versus in their pie in the sky model I would have had uh, ninety five thousand five hundred and forty two dollars after taxes okay which would you rather have I've got in my in the tax free I don't have to worry about running out of money in the uh, you have a good chance at four percent withdrawal rate that good chance now with low interest rates and uh, um, a more mo a more volatile market recent studies say you're going to run out of money 57 to 99 percent of the time okay so that's scary so their actual now they're they're saying their actual safe withdrawal rates 2.53 percent well now i'm not pulling out 83 7 84 i'm only pulling out 52 9 93 okay i'm still gonna have to pay taxes on that i'm pay tax on up to <clears throat> uh, excuse me up to uh, 85 percent of my social security because that's how it works with with everywhere they're telling us to put our money except for the roth uh, the, the the Roth 401k and the Roth IRA. So, look, here's my thing. Our focus should be not on building this huge pile of money, but building play it in an efficient in a place that's going to give us the most efficient income that'll last the rest of our lifetime. Uh, gives us the most money to spend, or we can take less money to create the income that we would have had with more money and we've got more money to do things with or more money to leave to our kids or whatever your plans are. So there's just a much more efficient way of handling it and traditional financial planning is not working. Um, it, 401k is not working. I don't care about the free money that you're supposedly getting with your um, uh, from your employer match. Even with that, when you run the real numbers, what's really actually happening out there to to people, You'll find that even with that, you're still not getting as much money and you're running out of money too soon. If you'd like for us to run that type of scenario for you, to show you what it would look like for you, all you got to do is just give me a holler, uh, 816. Uh, actually, I'll have my number up there, the information up there on the on the screen. Just give me a shout or email me. You can even schedule a smart retirement strategy session online with me uh, through that through the uh, the bottom link on that on that page. So I uh, just want to, I'm just, folks, the problem I have is, is I, you think that you're throwing your money in this 401k and you're going to be okay. And, and I'm telling you that the chances are, the, the, the deck stacked against you, the chances of that happening, that you're going to be okay, are very slim. It's not working out for people. Uh, so if you'd like to take control of your financial future, be able to live more stress-free and do the things that you, to live and do the things you want to do in retirement, We've got a much better way of doing that, but you got to get started. You can't, you can't wait. You, you know, the be, the best time to start would have been yesterday or the day before, but we can't travel back in time. So the next best time to, to, to get started on this is now. So give me a shout. Let's talk about it. Uh, I've got other videos you can check out at maxmyretirement.com, um, maxmyretirementincome.com. I've got other videos, and we've also got visit videos on our YouTube channel, Retirement Bliss TV. Give me a call if you need anything, if you have any questions. I uh, hope you enjoy this. If you do, please share the link with friends, family, coworkers, anyone you care about that wants to have a successful retirement. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for tuning in.